Okay, so short video um, on the process that you can go through to take a manufacturing biased design file um, and visualize that inside of a virtual reality system. Today, I've got uh, an Inventor file from Autodesk Inventor, or an Inv a CAD file, sorry, from Autodesk Inventor. Um, but the process is arguably the same, whether you're using Fusion 360, whether you're using a SolidWorks product, um, or pretty much any other CAD system out there. You have a 3D model, um, and we can follow this process. I'm not going to spend too much time looking at the exact ins and outs and how specifically I'm doing something, but it's looking at the process. So um, I'm in 3ds Max at the moment. If you've got a, a, an Autodesk product design collection, um, you will have access to 3ds Max. And I've simply imported in um, an assembly, an IAM, from um, Autodesk Inventor. If you're working in Fusion, you can kind of skip this step and go straight to an FBX file. Um, SolidWorks, I don't know if you can produce an FBX directly, but um, you can go through this kind of process. Um, but either way, I like to open it up in Max first, because inside of Max, we can add direct X shaders or materials, which um, Stingray really likes, which will be the next part of the process. So I've opened up this assembly. I've added some direct X compatible shaders. Um, I'm just going to make sure that all of my components are actually attached to my uh, my drill body here because it looks like one was uh, was missing. Um, so, yeah, I have uh, a drill body. Now, uh, with that drill body, I'm just going to um, rotate it around so that it's positioned um, the way I want it to be positioned once it gets across into virtual reality. So I'm going to bring it across 90 degrees and, uh, and maybe just bring it down a little bit um, so that it's sat sort of around my zero, zero point like that. Um, from there, I'm going to get this out into FBX. I'll use the game exporter, um, the same if you're using Maya, by the way. Um, and with that game exporter or the FBX exporter from the likes of Fusion 360, um, I'm just going to say take the, the geometry as it is with a, a Z axis as up in this case and go out to my desktop like so. That'll just take a couple of seconds to create. And then I can get rid of Max and launch Stingray. Now I'm using Stingray uh, latest version as of today, 16th of, uh, of March 2017. Um, I believe the process is the same in 1.6, but um, don't take my word on that because they are releasing new versions of the templates regularly. Um, so once you're in Stingray, we can go across into um, an Oculus Touch template. Um, these two templates, whether you're using Vive or Touch, are identical apart from the scripts that they contain. They're actually pretty good scripts um, that work really well. So jump into the, in my case, Oculus Touch template. And I'm just going to hit create. And the first load of this will just take a minute or two because it needs to compile everything. So um, a bit of background on Stingray while it does so. It's a game engine. So it's uh, it's the equivalent of the likes of um, you know the Unreal Engine or the Unity Engine. Um, it allows you to create video games. Um, it supports flows and scripts and, and models. Um, it's a great product. It's, it's quite new for Autodesk, but it's, um, it's really coming on leaps and bounds. And actually, it really does play quite a big part in, in what we can do from a CAD perspective because it taps into virtual reality because it has to. It's a game engine, right? So um, it has to support that technology. So from our perspective as Inventor users or Fusion 360 users or Revit users, we can rent this product for you know, peanuts. It's, it's like 500 pounds or something stupid a year. It's, it's really, really, really cheap. Um, and actually, we can start using this product to, to give us really nice visualizations and see our components and see our products before they are a reality. So we'll just give this a couple more seconds to compile the data. And then I'll talk you through the process with this out of the box template. So once you're inside of Stingray, uh, I'm just going to zoom with my mouse wheel to get into this uh, this room here. Ooh, not too far um, to get into this room. Um, and what we have with Stingray is basically a game engine, as I keep saying. So um, it, it can be quite daunting in the user interface. Um, but essentially, in this case, we have a load of CAD geometry or a load of uh, 3D geometry. We've got some lights. Uh, there's a reflection sphere here. Um, and we have uh, a spawn point, a player spawn point. Um, quite simply, all I'm going to do is, is make use of what is in this template for us already. So in particular, let's go and find this baseball bat. 
Um, let's open this unit up into the unit editor. Um, select the component itself, the bat, and I'm just going to make a mental note of some of these settings, namely the script data, pick up and snap, and I'm also going to come over into the unit flow down here. Once in the unit flow, I'm going to choose um, to reuse these flow elements, which will highlight the component when your hand is over it and enable you to pick it up. I'm just going to copy those with Control C on my keyboard. Come out of the unit editor um, and come into my asset browser here. Um, and on the asset browser now, I'm going to go into my content folder. Um, let's go across into models and props. And let's choose to import our drill file into our props folder. I'm going to leave all these options as default, um, just importing the materials and the mesh. That'll just take a couple of seconds and our drill will be dropped into our assets. We have a preview of the drill here and we can see it's looking nice with those direct X shaders on there. Now with this specific drill, um, I'm going to come in and say that I would like to um, drag and drop it um, into the scene just here on my table. I'm then going to choose to open the asset um, into the unit editor. So I'll right click and open. And then I'm going to choose the body of the drill itself and right click to create a physics actor to say that I want to be able to um, react or, or, uh, or use this object in, uh, in reality. I'm going to make it a dynamic component. And uh, just for simplification, to keep it nice and simple today, I'm going to tell it to rather than use all these polygons and mesh, I'm going to tell it to understand it as a box. So it's just got a nice, simple bounding box around the outside. Um, let's head over to script data and add two strings. Uh, we need to add a string, which is uh, pick underscore up with a value of yes. And then we need to add a second one, which is uh, snap also with the value of yes, so that those scripts will work correctly. Let's come down to our unit flow and simply do a, a paste, control V or edit paste. Um, and this will just, we can add these manually by the way. So if you knew that you wanted to add uh, um, an event and you came to event and then you wanted to do uh, an external in event, we could go and select your external in event. Uh, so external in event. Um, we can do these manually, but the fact that the template's really well set up, I just paste those in, save the element, and close that down. For argument's sake, I'm also going to drill um, or bring the drill over and place him um, over here on this section. But with that one over there, I'm going to uh, scale him up five times in the X, Y, and the Z, just to make a, a bigger version of the drill to have a look at. At that point, I'm pretty happy to go. Um, so let's go ahead and press the, the play button here. This is going to start the uh, the the, um, uh, the experience or the game. Um, so I'm going to have to put my Oculus headset on. It will mirror the screen. Um, I am recording directly off the screen. Um, the frames per second on that's quite high, so I might have a bit of a uh, bit of drop in frame rate compared to normal. But you will get the general consensus. Um, so I'm going to stick on my uh, my Oculus headset. Um, and I'm going to make sure that I'm not near any other people so I can't trip over them. Um, and I'm going to take my Oculus Touch controllers. Um, so again, this is a completely out-of-the-box template, nothing difficult. Um, this isn't something that you should have um, difficulty doing. Um, it's just basically copying and pasting or reusing what's already there. Um, so I have my headset on. I have my controllers in my hands, although the wrong hands. So let's just swap those over so that they are in the correct hands so I can actually use them. The only downside as you can see, I guess. Um, so I can see my controllers in my hands. Perfect. Um, using the standard functionality within this template, I'm just going to use uh, my controller buttons to show you that I can come over here and I can interact with all these default components. I can push them around, I can pick them up um, and throw them at each other, and I can choose to reset individual elements. Um, so I basically copy the bat with my drill. You'll notice if I bring my hand close to my drill here, it will highlight in a specific color. When it's highlighting, I can press a button on my controller to be able to pick that drill up. So that drill is now sat in my hand, and I'm, uh, I'm going to be able to have a look at it and see exactly how that looks to be in my hand. Um, obviously, you can use your imagination to um, how you could do this. You can uh, physically have your hand visible rather than use uh, these controllers. But um, you have the ability to throw it and catch it and 
do whatever it is that you want to be able to do with that drill. And somehow I've managed to do that at the bottom of the, the, of the drill. So um, let's just uh, head over this way um, and see if we've got the, uh, the larger drill at the top there. But let's just um, use our virtual uh, controllers to move closer to this element. Let's go over this side over here and uh, see the bigger version of the drill. Now, as I said, it's a bounding box. I don't want to get too close to it because it will fire itself uh, away from me. But again, I'm a little bit closer, so I'm not interfering with my uh, boundaries on the octopus. So you see, as I get close to it, it highlights. As I get close to it, I can uh, use my pickup button to be able to pick up that component. Uh, now, in this case, it's a little bit far away from my hand in the virtual perspective um, because I've used that bounding box, which is kind of here rather than here. Um, but I've just done it quickly and easily just to show you the functionality. But again, you can pick it up, you can have a look around it, um, and it's all from a component um, that has been modeled up inside the event. It works exactly the same with the component that's been modeled up um, inside of Fusion 360. You have the ability to interact with it and do whatever it is that you want. So you can uh, put it down the room, pick it up, throw it, and whatever it is. So, um, it's, uh, it's really easy, it's, uh, it's really intuitive, it's, it's not difficult to do these, um, these kind of workflows. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, hopefully that's been useful. And, um, we'll catch you next time. Happy planning.